Hi, I'm Rowan. And hi, I'm Zach. This is the very 31st episode of In The Zone. Today we'll be talking about the episode The Chaser. Watch it however you'd want to. So we start where um, we have the scene and it's like people outside of a phone booth. Right, people waiting in line, everyone's all bored because this guy is he keeps calling. Which is probably going to be a nominee for best phone booth scene, spoiler alert. Mm-hmm. We have to explain every time about the Zonies. Yes, so the, the Zonies, Zonies are the end of season award show, show and one of the categories, categories is, is best, best phone booth scene. scene. And so this far... Is one, one that could be in it. The so category... Far, so far, <laughs> one of the phone booth scenes is not very good. You see, it is not very good because it is not even a yeah, scene. Dude. It is only a 30-second <laughs> clip. It is about... It's more it like a 6 It is not even second 30 clip. seconds. It is, it is more like 6 seconds. And you are not good at lip-syncing. Thinking. So a guy comes in and he's like, he comes into the bar and he's like, ooh, why did he use the phone? And everyone's like, hey, uh -huh. this is his fifth time calling. And this woman's like, he doesn't talk, he just dials. Maybe he has a dialect. And we're like, ha ha ha. This so is a funny. This is a Twilight Zone episode that has humor in it. Oh, and it has I would failures. Call it. <laughs> that was what? There's some parts that made me laugh out loud. Like what? We'll get Tell to me it. when we get to them. <laughs> Mostly in the second half. We learn from the intro that the guy, Roger Shackleforth, is in love with a dame. Who and is he's in his And let's just put out that Ro Roger Shackleforth is in his 20s and looks like he's like 55, so... He does not! He is super handsome. It's one of the things that I just noticed doesn't usually... I was thinking of maybe doing like... I don't know, his hairline... Nice dame, handsome gent. <laughs> whoa! Whoa! <laughs> Most stacked broad. <laughs> We should have like, uh, I don't know, we should have some category denoting how this was like a totally sexist episode. <laughs> Maybe. Well, we can talk about it on this episode. Yeah. So this guy um buys the people's spot in line for four bucks. Wow. Wow. Total. Wow. Four bucks total. The woman at the front is like, why well, should third place be worth the same as first place? And it's like great because <laughs> she's like, I don't know. She's, short. she's like 75. And she, and she does not talk like that. She's like way, 75, four foot five and carrying a huge box and she's <laughs> haggling over her place in line. And then, yeah, because she, um, she wants two dollars and everyone else got one dollar. And so he <laughs> obliges. It's pretty, pretty good. good. And so meanwhile, the guy's talking on the phone. Leela picks up and she's like, oh, it's you. Hashtag Tina Jr. Tina. Yeah. <laughs> we should totally start that. And he can't. He you should totally have a subtitle here. Hashtag Tina Jr. Oh, it'll Jr. be like how on TV shows they have, they have a little fade into like a hashtag in the corner they want you to use. Yeah. We'll do it. Hashtag Tina Jr. Look at it. She doesn't want him to come because he's like, oh, I'm a mess. And he's like, oh, I must see us. Just say something. And she says, all right, I'll say something. Why don't you take a flying jump at the moon? What? Dis, whoa, dis, whoa, dis, whoa, whoa, dis. Whoa, whoa. So the guy who was paying everyone, he walks into the phone booth and he's like, uh, hey, I'll pay you. I just leave. Oh, no, no, he doesn't pay him. He gives him a card. A business card. He's at, so then we it, he's like, it worked for me. And I'm like. He Stuff. fades and Roger's, at, uh, Roger's at the door and the sign says, Professor A. Diamond. I don't think right. I'd enter. Would you enter? What? What did you say? I don't think if the sign on the door said A. Damon, I would enter. Oh! Uh, <laughs> would you? Well, I would just assume that they're doing some kind of funny joke. Like, like when you have those novelty gravestones as Halloween decorations. Yeah. <laughs> Stuff like that. And, 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 and so let's just put out that they use the fever music and it is so good in this scene. Well, yeah, because he's just walking down this dark hallway that leads yeah. to the door. And it's and just it's, like jaunty music. The door is open by themselves and he's in this big old library and there's this man sitting there with his Gryffindor scarf. And he's a demon. He's a demon. Wait, does he have Gryff a Gryffindor scarf? Yeah, it looks like it would be those colors. So the guy goes, um, do I know you? And then the guy says, no. And so a diamond says, then you must not be coming for the glove cleaner. The glove cleaner? Yep. That confused me the whole time. Because he talked about love potion and glove cleaner. Yeah, but it sounds like, like love cleaner. I don't know. Yeah. 
That and was that was weak. That was a weak correlation. And it implies that it's supposed to be poison, but it's like not such an Wait, obvious it's implication. Wait, actually poison? Yeah. He was going to poison her. Mm-hmm. Okay, that makes a little bit of sense. Yeah, yeah, but it's super like, ambiguous. Like when I saw it, I was like, "What the heck?" So I had just had to believe when he was. Like, later in the episode, like, yeah. I was like, oh, that must be poison. I thought later in the episode, <laughs> I thought it was just, like, d love of fire and he couldn't go through with it. Roger asks him, what do you have? He says, I have different words for potion. And, <laughs> yeah, elixirs, draughts, concoctions, medicines. <laughs> yep. Um, and so he's like, what do you want? And Roger's like, I don't want anything except for Leela. The guy says um, that he can arrange so that she loves him. And he's like, are you sure you wouldn't be interested in glove cleaner? And later, later That's what I call it. It has many names, including the Eradicator. Oh, I, I missed that part because I was taking notes. <laughs> then why do you say aloud Eradicator? And so he says that glove cleaner is expensive, but the love potion is but a dollar. So the guy's like, well, I'll take it. If this works, I'll be, and then they both say at once, the happiest man in the world. <laughs> why am I so coffee? Then he's at Lilo's house, behind her door, and she's like, Ah, I told you, you can't come to see me. But he says, I have flowers and champagne. Just one drink, just one drink, Lila baby. It'll be five minutes. And she's like, okay, one drink. In her annoying teenager voice, then you go. I think he, <laughs> what? <laughs> she's like, I'll go put on my dress. So then while she's leaving, he slips into her drink some love potion. Then, um, then they drink, and she's like, your time is up. And he's like, and she says, um, that she doesn't love him or want him there, and she, she doesn't even like him. She reluctantly kisses him goodbye, and then suddenly she says, perhaps I am being cruel. And then she says, let me make it a little nicer. And then, <laughs> big tall wish. And like right here, yeah, he, he does look really old for his age in this scene. Oh, he, he doesn't look that old. I don't know, just like when like he has no hair. Yeah. When, 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 when his when hairline hair is, is like yeah, when his hairline is like right here, he just looks like forty five. So then um, at least. So then he's like, "What's happening?" And he says, "What's the difference? Come here, baby." And he does his uh, hands like that, and then they hug and or kiss. So then he is um sitting reading, and she's gazing at him lovingly. Yeah, like, and pretty much. Let's just summarize up the next ten. <coughs> I, I think no, 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 no. There's some good jokes. You can, you can. We need to go in depth. You can compare it to the fever in a lot of ways. Because you can like, summarize it easily. Like the it, point they're trying to get across. Pretty much, yeah. And lots some, of the same music. He wants her to go, <laughs> and and he's like, "What well, should I sit on?" these? like, "I don't care." He says, "Um, should I get you your slippers?" And he's like, "No, they make my feet hot." He says, "And this is what made me laugh." He says. <laughs> If your feet are hot, I will douse my head in ice water and caress them. Wait, wait, wait. Hashtag ice water. And no, 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 wait, wait. Move, move it back a little. Whoa! It's gonna say hashtag. Uh, if your feet are hot, then I'll have to uh, douse them, my do hands in ice water and caress them. She's like, would you like me to rub your back? And pretty much, she has a. Pretty much, she adores him for like the next ten minutes. Where did I disturb your reading? Did, Did I disturb, disturb you by asking if I disturbed you or reading? Which I thought was pretty funny. I really wanted more levels. And so he suddenly realizes, oh, I have an appointment. I have to go. You can hug my jacket while I'm gone, which is really funny. And so then he goes back to the, the old place. To a demon. To a demon. And a demon is like, oh, I know how things turned out. And he's like, what? I just wanted to tell you that everything's fine. And the guy goes and he's like, we love a cleaner. And the guy says, I didn't come for that. Eventually, he's like, um, I'm going out of my mind! So here's the deal. Glove cleaner is a poison mm -hmm. and costs a thousand dollars. Just saying, if you ever want to poison your lover, bleach is cheaper. Oh, you're totally right. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> bleach is cheaper. He's like, is there any potion that can transport her love to a dog or something? And he's like, no. And He so, uses Cocker Spaniel, which they used earlier. When? Like earlier, he, he like he was like, oh, what will make her just like a cocker spaniel? In what context? Like she'll follow you around, no. she'll love you. You could get the same from a cocker spaniel. Mm. Well, okay. 
So he says so the A demon says that he must use it immediately and all of it or else he will lose his courage. And he has a check for um a thousand dollars which is really cool because it's like he was totally prepared for this. But how did he know that it was a thousand dollars? Oh he did because he was told because yeah, he was told it. Right, right, right. Buys it. And then he says, name drop. First the stimulant, then the chaser. So I'd like to say the only reason that this is better than um uh that that that, that this is a better poison than like a bleach is because it's painless and tasteless. But you can always take but you, you can always give her painkillers. So hey. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's see, Brilliant. Novocaine. Alright, you are kicked off the show because you are too dangerous for my own health. We can have a disagreement at the Zonies, and the next thing you know, I'm dead! <laughs> then, I mean, um, what a shame. Then it's just gonna be you and Calvin, like, oh. knocking over a table <laughs> and just hitting it against the wall. And, like, and breaking the wall. It's just gonna be you destroying thing. You're gonna be singing, man in a suit, man in a suit, man in a suit, man in a suit, Monsters are due on Maple Street. That it's, was that was a good episode. It's just gonna win everything. Just everything. Listen, everything, it everything, will win everything. everything because it is the best episode that there is. Really? Hashtag Monsters is better. He uh, goes home. They talk about how they've been married for six months, and that's where they're having a party with champagne and flowers. Then he slips the poison, the glove cleaner, into her drink, and he's like, "I remember our very first drink." So then she says, I have news for you, little rabbit. And then, rabbit. And then he drops both the glasses. That's two glass breaks. Then we say, for some reason, a demon is at their house. And no, 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 like, like then we get like a spinny around shot of the city. So really, it could be like any balcony. And then he blows a cigar. And it makes a smoke ring in the shape of a heart. How sweet. And then he disappears and it's the end. So I kind of wonder why the word, what the word rabbit did for him. It was because he was- She knows! She knows! <laughs> I think- Well, here's the idea. It totally came across to me that she was pregnant. And so that shocked him so much that he dropped the glasses. But I don't oh, understand- I how, have news. Uh, yeah, yeah, that, that totally made the connection. But I didn't understand how rabbit, maybe in the 60s, that was just a term for baby. But she called I him- I mean, in the 60s, you, you didn't sugar say, was baby. But she didn't say, I have- um, a little rabbit in my uterus. She said, um... She knows! <laughs> she said... Rowan, <laughs> ah, Rowan. She knows. No, but she said, she called him a rabbit as, like, yeah, affection, so it doesn't work. Then, she knows. Honestly, I, I think it was, like, you know, a decent... We haven't seen any love potions. We have seen, seen potions. Though. Henry J. Fate. This kind of reminds me of Nightmare of a Child, except Nightmare as a Child isn't gruesomely misogynist. Misogynist steak. Misogynist steak. Misogynist steak. Um, so, um, so, yeah. Um, I just don't think it was very good. It didn't do a lot for me. She had an annoying voice. It wasn't acted particularly well. Um... It wasn't scripted particularly well. I think this was my biggest clunker since, like, Third from the Sun. Let's, I, I'm, I'm even going to say that. Hey, guess what? I like this one. <laughs> and that's the truth. Um, you know what? Just a fine episode. I thought the acting was actually good. Story, uh, well paced. It was good. I thought it was cool that that guy's making a living by, uh, by the, the badness of human nature. I liked it. Okay, so I'm just gonna say there were plenty of plot flaws that there were. Okay, well, well first he, he sold poison for a thousand dollars. There was just also... That's how he makes his living. There weren't that many, but it was also a little bit like Fever. Fever, there are like right. ten minutes of Franklin feverishly well, I thought that playing the gambling machine, and this, like, there's ten minutes of just, like... It entertained me. Yeah, okay. Well, I wasn't kept bored by watching a guy pull a slot machine over and over. Well, I was kept bored by like, Ugh. I understand. I'm just gonna say it loses two points outright for her voice. Whoa! Give it a rating. Okay, four. This is my worst rate, second worst rating I have ever given. No. Well, I guess this isn't the biggest rating split of all time. This could be. This could be. No. Nah, because the biggest is three and a half. I can give it. 
Ten. <laughs> Yay, okay. Good job, on you. Six and a half. Six and a half. So this concludes business on episode number thirty-one. Look at you, sir. Next time we'll see you, and we'll be talking about the episode "Passage for Trumpet."